Good morning, Living Faith. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says this, Let us look to Jesus because He is the author and finisher of our faith. Thank God for somebody lovingly giving the pen over to God or the typewriter so He can write the next chapter in our lives. If anybody has done that, it's been Alex Copeland. You're about to hear from him right now. I thank God for Alex and Lisa Copeland. They're people of honor, people of love, people of generosity. We thank God for the day that they made Living Faith our, our, their home church. And they're great leaders, and we thank God for them today. Hear about Alex's story, how his story is really God's story in his story. God bless you as you listen. Living Faith, my name is Craig Copeland, affectionately known as Alex. My life is filled with many instances of personal tragedies, loss, trauma, self-destruction, and of course, redemption. At any one time, I can look back on my life and can clearly see God's love and His constant hand of protection over my life. And I would like to take the time out right now to give Him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for it all. The song sung by Lisa Page Brooks titled, I Want to Thank You, says, For every time that you protected me when I didn't know your name, how you loved me and cared for me when I didn't return the same, Lord, I thank you. So, this is my story. At a young age, almost right out of high school, I joined the Army and a buddy of mine went to a basic training together and was later stationed at what would be my first and last duty station. I was assigned to the 2nd AD Tank Division and was excited about being able to serve my country like my father did. And even though I thought it would never happen, I felt as though I was prepared to pay the ultimate sacrifice for my country if it came to it. As a unit, we trained day and night, spending almost 200 to 250 days out of the year in the field perfecting our craft. Side note, I was raised in a Christian home all my life and was taught at an early age what would grieve the heart of God and to learn to lean on Him for all that I knew and understood. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go and he will not depart from it. So I knew right from wrong. Back to my story. I was your typical soldier when we came back out of the field and from training. I was determined to live my life for me and me only. So I knew that the life I was leading was going against God's will and plan for my life. One day in 1990, we were told that there was a possibility that we would be going to war and maybe deploying to Iraq soon. I began to ponder what my life would look like as a war veteran when it hit me. There was this great sense of dread that came over me. One would think that as a young man, I would be afraid for my life, but it was not so. I was prepared to die for my country, but what I had not taken into account is that I might be in a situation where I would have to take someone else's life. And what if they were not prepared spiritually to meet God? The Bible says strictly, thou shalt not kill. How would I be able to make it to heaven after doing what I knew to be a sin? I was under extreme duress. I called my mom and discussed with her my concerns. God will always put someone in your life that can help in times of distress. I asked my mom to pray. Mom told me, God knows the content of your heart. Don't worry, son. But I was worried. Later on that day, I was talking to a buddy of mine about the possibility of going to war, and somehow the conversation switched over to God. My buddy said to me, I am not going to be a hypocrite. God knows who I am, and if I die in my sins, I die. I was so mad. Now y'all, I've been saved and backslid, saved and backslid and saved. I've done this yo-yo act my whole young adult life. And here I was not saved and arguing about God's grace and mercy and how foolish it would be not to ask for forgiveness. Can you see God's hand? I remember this next moment like it was yesterday. On a hot sunny day around noon, still under duress, my battle buddy Gara, a professed Christian and I were sitting on the tank after training eating child, discussing how close we were to war. And as a Christian, what would that look like? We decided to pray that God would go with us, protect us, and keep us. After prayer, we opened up our eyes and looked off in the hills, and in the sky there was a rainbow. There was no rain, there were no clouds, but the sun and a rainbow. Sometimes when you listen in the still of the moment, you can hear God. It's as, it has impressed upon me that we would get close to the action, but we would not fire a single shot. And I told Gara that I felt that the rainbow was God's promise to us that he would keep us and that we would not fire a single shot. 
We finally deployed overseas and on the day of the attack, we were poised and ready for what we were trained to do. I had long forgotten about what transpired in that field some months ago with Gara, myself, and God. I was focused on the mission. Our whole tank battalion was in attack formation, gun tubes moving back and forth. We listened on the radio about how the attack was going, and I remembered we had the enemy in our sights some two miles away. This is considered engagement range for us and the enemy. When over the radio we heard, cease fire. It was at this very moment that I remembered God's promise to me and Gera back in that field. The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you, my God, are with me. The Bible says he will not leave us nor forsake us even when we are within the enemy's sights and he is ready to strike and it feels like all is lost and you feel like giving up, God is there. From time to time, we forget about God's grace and mercy that brought us through. You forget that you are living this moment because of him. He is desperately looking, desperately looking for his lost. He is looking for you. He resides on the throne of mercy, extending grace. Don't let the enemy trick you into believing you're a hypocrite if you say, take my life and let it be. Consecrate it, Lord, to thee. Take his hand, trust him, and I promise you, you will come out of it victorious. I still have issues sometimes with having been over there, but I continue to trust in God for all of his help. I pray that God keeps you in his loving care. Oh, to tell you my story is to tell of him. This is my story, Brother Alex.